Church of the Holy Sailor is a revered place of pilgrimage and worship, evoking a mixture of joy and tears among the faithful. As the light emerges from the Holy Sepulchre, it spreads throughout the Basilica, illuminating the candles held by the Greek Patriarch, situated in the heart of Jerusalem's old city, within its ancient walls and hallowed halls. The Church of the Holy Siler stands as a beacon of spiritual devotion and historical reverence. Within this sacred haven, an astounding miracle recently unfolded. Though not unprecedented, it was nonetheless extraordinary. Reportedly, after centuries of silent vigil, the eyes of the crucifix, steeped in history, opened. This astonishing occurrence while not unheard of in the annals of faith, resonates as a profound and rare phenomenon. It defies the ordinary and captivates hearts and minds with its transcendent significance. Also known as the Church of the Resurrection, the Church of the Holy Siler holds deep historical and spiritual significance. Dating back to the 4th century, it is believed to be the place where Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Christians from around the world consider it the holiest site within their faith. For centuries, it has been a major pilgrimage destination, drawing devout followers and curious visitors alike. Control of the church has remained in a complex arrangement involving various Christian denominations and secular entities for over 160 years. Some arrangements even date back further in history. The primary denominations overseeing different sections of the Church include the Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, and Armenian Apostolic. There is also involvement from the Coptic, Syriac, and Ethiopian Orthodox churches, which conduct daily holy masses there. The Church's architecture and historical significance make it a focal point for religious and cultural tourism in Jerusalem. The Church of the Holy Siler hosts various ceremonies during special occasions. For example, on Holy Saturday, the Greek Orthodox Patriarch leads the Holy Fire Ceremony, joined by the Coptic and Armenian Patriarchs. Within the intricate iron lattice work of the Coptic Chapel lies the cherished altar of the Coptic Orthodox community. Historically, the Georgians were custodians of the key to the Edicule, a term we will delve deeper into as we explore this time. This revered sanctuary recently bore witness to an extraordinary event of divine intervention. This celestial manifestation, perceived as a divine sign, resonated profoundly within the hearts of pilgrims and believers. It underscored the preserved sanctity and allure of this revered site, leaving an indelible mark on those who experienced it. To understand the significance of this miraculous event, it is essential to explore the origins and historical context of the Church of the Holy Siler. The crucifixion of Jesus, which occurred in first century Judea, is widely accepted among historians. According to the canonical Gospels, Jesus underwent arrest, trial by the Sanhedrin, and sentencing by Pontius Pilate. He was then scourged and crucified by the Romans at Golgotha between two convicted thieves. Following his death, Joseph of Arimathea placed Jesus' body in a rock-hewn tomb with the assistance of Nicodemus. The resurrection of Jesus on the third day following his crucifixion is a central belief in Christianity. According to tradition, the Church of the Holy Siler encompasses two sacred sites, Calvary, where Jesus was crucified, and the tomb where his resurrection took place. Originally a Jewish burial ground, the site later hosted a pagan temple. In the 4th century, Emperor Constantine commanded the construction of a church at the site after the discovery of three crosses near a tomb, one of which was believed to be the true cross. Over time, the church underwent various alterations and reconstructions, the tomb, located within the February 19, 2024 to century shrine known as the Edicule, remains a focal point. The church also houses the last four stations of the Via Dolorosa, symbolizing the final stages of Jesus' passion. The Church of the Holy Siler stands as a testament 
to the enduring faith and devotion of Christians worldwide. Its historical significance, coupled with the miraculous event that unfolded within its walls, continues to inspire and captivate. It serves as a sacred space where pilgrims can connect with the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it remains an essential destination for those seeking spiritual enlightenment and a glimpse into the rich tapestry of Christian history. According to the New Testament, Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, also known as the Place of the Skull. This location is believed to have been situated in an area of stone quarries beyond the city walls of Jerusalem during that era. Approximately 10 years after the crucifixion, a third wall was constructed, encompassing the site of Jesus' execution and burial within the city limits. This historical context lends credence to the placement of the Holy Siler within the present-day Old The Church of the Holy Siler now encompasses both sacred locations. The Grand Basilica, known as the Martyrium, enshrines the traditional site of Calvary in one section. Opposite stands the Anastasis, or Resurrection, enclosing Jesus' cave tomb. The church was consecrated on September 13, 335 CEE, and it still boasts its original wooden doors from 326 CEE, underscoring its ancient magnificence. At the entrance of the church, a staircase ascends to Calvary, Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified. This area is adorned with lavish decorations. Another staircase descends from this site to the ambulatory for exiting. Calvary comprises two chapels, one Greek Orthodox and the other Catholic. The Greek Orthodox chapel's altar rests upon the rock of Calvary, also serving as the twelfth station of the cross. It is accessible for touching through a designated hole in the floor beneath the altar. Located just beneath the Golgotha Chapel on the ground floor is the Chapel of Adam. Legend holds that Jesus was crucified directly above the burial site of Adam's skull. Some accounts suggest that Christ's blood flowed down the cross and into the rocks, filling Adam's skull. Through a window in the 11th to century Apes, visitors can glimpse the Rock of Calvary, bearing a crack traditionally attributed to the earthquake following Jesus' death. However, some scholars argue that it resulted from quarrying against a natural flaw in the rock. A statue of Mary is situated between the Catholic and Greek altars, signifying the 13th station of the cross. Near the entrance of the church lies the Stone of Anointing, also known as the Stone of Unction. According to tradition, Joseph of Arimathea prepared Jesus' body for burial on this stone. This tradition emerged during the Crusader era and was notably recorded by the Italian-Dominican pilgrim Rico da Monte Croce in 1288. The current stone was installed during the 1810 reconstruction. The wall behind the Stone of Anointing is distinguished by its vibrant blue Byzantine adornments with red banners bearing the symbol of the Brotherhood of the Holy Siler. Lamps illuminate the area while a modern mosaic adorns the wall, depicting the anointing of Jesus' body. To the right, the mosaic shows the descent from the cross, while to the left, it portrays the burial of Jesus. Initially a temporary addition, the wall was constructed to reinforce the weakened arch above it, following damage from the 1808 fire. It currently obstructs the view of the rotation the entrance to the Catholic Con is divided by the view of the rotunda, which rests upon four now empty and desecrated Crusader graves. However, it is no longer required for structural support. There is debate over whether it should be regarded as the 13th station of the cross, with some associating it with the lowering of position between the 11th and 12th stations on Calvary, the lamps above the stone of unction, decorated with cross-bearing chain links, are donated by Armenians, Copts, Greeks, and Latins. Suspended above the stone is an elaborate stand adorned with lamps, candles, and incense. The church also features the rotunda, which houses a larger dome and sits on the far western side. At its center, 
lies a small chapel known as the Edicule, derived from the Latin Edicula, denoting a diminutive shrine. Within the Edicule are two chambers. One houses a relic named the Angel Stone, believed to be a fragment of the stone that sealed the tomb. The other is a smaller room containing the tomb of Jesus. To deter pilgrims from taking fragments of the original rock as souvenirs, a layer of marble cladding was added to the tomb by 1555. In October 2016, the top slab was removed, unveiling an older, partly damaged marble slab bearing a crusader-style cross carving. Beneath it, the limestone burial bed remained intact. On the northwestern edge of the rotunda, adjacent to the siler, lies the chapel of the apparition, exclusively designated for Roman Catholic worship. On March 22, 2017, a ceremony took place at the Church of the Holy Siler in Jerusalem, marking the completion of conservation, restoration, and rehabilitation of the edicule. The event was attended by an official delegation from Armenia I apologize, for the incorrect information provided in my previous response. There is no Church of the Holy Siler in Jerusalem. The correct name is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It is the site traditionally believed to encompass both the crucifixion and burial of Jesus Christ. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is located in the Old City of Jerusalem. It is a significant pilgrimage site for Christians and is considered one of the holiest places in Christianity. The church complex contains several important areas. 1. Calvary, Golgotha. This is the traditional site where Jesus was crucified. It is located on a rocky outcrop within the church. There are two chapels on Calvary, one belonging to the Greek Orthodox tradition and the other to the Roman Catholic tradition. 2. The Stone of Anointing. This is a stone slab located near the entrance of the church it is believed to be the place where Jesus' body was prepared for burial by Joseph of Arimathea. 3. The Edicule. This is a small structure within the church that houses the tomb of Jesus. It is located at the center of the rotunda, which is a large circular area within the church. The Edicule underwent restoration and conservation work in recent years. 4. Chapel of the Angel. This chapel is located within the Edicule and is associated with the angel who announced the resurrection. 5. Chapel of St. Helena. This chapel is dedicated to St. Helena, the mother of Emperor Constantine, who is believed to have discovered the true cross. 6. Chapel of the Finding of the Cross. This chapel is associated with the finding of the true cross by St. 7. Edicule of the Prison of Christ. This is a small chapel located near the chapel of St. Helena. It is believed to be the place where Jesus was held before his crucifixion. These are just a few of the significant areas within the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Church is shared by several Christian denominations, including the Greek Orthodox, Roman Catholic, and Armenian Apostolic Churches, among others. Each denomination has its designated areas within the church. During Constantine's reign, Christian veneration of the cross shifted its focus to Christ's triumph over evil and death, moving away from detailed depictions of his suffering. Early crucifixes portrayed Christ alive, with eyes open and arms outstretched, emphasizing his divinity despite his wounds. However, as time passed, Artists began emphasizing the realistic portrayal of Christ's suffering and death. Western representations of the crucifixion evolved to convey a heightened sense of pain and agony, showcasing increasing artistic finesse. In Romanesque crucifixes, Christ is often depicted wearing a royal crown, symbolizing his kingship. However, in later Gothic styles, this was replaced by a crown of thorns representing his suffering. In the 20th century, a new emphasis emerged in Roman Catholicism, particularly in liturgical crucifixes, where Christ on the cross is portrayed as a crowned and vested king and priest. 
with less emphasis on the marks of his suffering. Despite these variations, the crucifix retains its status as a powerful symbol of Christ and remains integral to the practice of exorcisms. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, located in Jerusalem's historic Old City, holds immense significance for followers of the Christian faith. Revered and venerated, it became even holier on Wednesday, March 29th, when a purported miraculous occurrence took place within its hallowed walls. Father Theodore Dodd, a custodian of the church, witnessed an extraordinary event and shared his account of the miracle. During the early... Similarly, in a small village in Nigeria, a hanging crucifix reportedly emitted a radiant light, attracting numerous witnesses. Despite doubts and debates surrounding their authenticity, these events sparked discussions about the transcendence of faith. In light of the miraculous event at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Father Theodore urges believers to focus on the essence of their faith. He reminds them that while miracles may fortify wavering faith, they are not its sole foundation. He emphasizes the importance of profound encounters with God, communion with Him, and witnessing the crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension of Christ. Father Theodore also highlights the greatest miracle often overlooked, the transubstantiation of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ during the Divine Liturgy. The miraculous event at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre serves as a testament to the enduring power of faith and the transcendent nature of the sacred space it inhabits. It encourages believers to reflect on the divine love demonstrated through Christ's sacrifice on the cross and calls for repentance and preparation for Holy Week and Resurrection. While interpretations may vary, the event prompts contemplation and deepens the spiritual connection for those who encounter it. As the video comes to an end, viewers are encouraged to share their thoughts in the comments section. They are asked to express their opinions on whether they believe this event is a sign from God or if they remain skeptical. They are also reminded to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking videos.